Be sure to download the entire podcast on iTunes or wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please like and subscribe for more videos. Welcome, everybody, to episode two of Making Muppet Land. This is a five-part mini podcast series or podcast mini series, I should say, on the making of the dark ride. And if you listen to episode one, which I recommend you do before you listen to this one, um, you'll you'll know that Nick, Brent and I have worked together over the years on my arcade business and growing up. We, we would tinker in the garage and we would we were just talking about before we started the episode Nick that we would make like puppets and like on like little wires and they would be like uh, you know like googly eye puppets with little like drop phone little drop jaws and we did like oh, a yeah. vegetable puppet just silly stuff um, and then Brent when I would go to summer camp with you I would get exposed to new stuff like plaster of Paris and um, large, latex, puppets. Large, puppets. <laughs> large puppets large large puppets you built an audrey Fumisteria. too yeah, yeah. from a sarah i yep. so uh if you know the show fiddler on the roof there's a from a sarah brent had built this this brent had this massive from a sarah puppet. i took it home and my, you know i just i loved puppets growing up by the time i got to college i actually i interned at the uh jim henson muppet um what they call it the Muppet Mansion it was the Muppet Workshop, but it was actually the mansion on the east side of Manhattan where Jim Henson worked before he passed. And you would see, I remember I walked in one day and Elmo was shooting a bit and it was like Isaac Mizrahi and Elmo. I was making him a tuxedo, some form of gala. <laughs> Elmo's friend Isaac Mizrahi that designed the suit for Elmo. Wow. It was just the magic of being in the place where Jim Henson created it all. So that always stayed with me. And I think Brent, that's ultimately why when it came to picking a theme for this ride, Muppets prevailed because because you and I have this distinct passion for all things Jim Henson. If you're going to design a ride where the Muppets are taking over Disneyland, like, first of all, who's in it? But then how do you make that a Muppet experience? And that's where, like, these little nuanced touches come about, where it's whether it's Rizzo with mouse ears or Sam the Eagle at the top of the totem pole. That's the kind of stuff Jim Henson did best. It was very spontaneous, even though it was obviously well planned. It seems spontaneous on the moment, and that's what made it even funnier. I think it was originally it was like, A, how long is this ride going to be? And how how what do we accomplish within that ride in the in the section of, of scenes? Because we still had to break each area down into a scene area. What's happening as you turn the corner here? What's happening when you go along this straight area along here? We're doing like neck movement, head turns, mouth open and close. We're not even getting down into arms and, and lip yeah. movements and all that. I mean, we're still learning that stuff. But just at the base level of we had all these conversations about the back of the mouth where the back of the mouth meets and how for certain characters you have sort of the back of the mouth comes to a point. Yeah. So like Kermit's the back of the mouth comes to a point. But if you want to do something... I don't know why I'm thinking of like the aliens from Sesame Street with the yip yip jaws. But if you want to do something that's got more of like a like a scooped in mouth, you know what I mean? That's yeah. a different inner structure, which is essentially yes. what the birds are. Then yep. if you want to do something like Kermit, which has that sort of restrictive point in the back, because now you've got to sort of pull that thing open. And yep. if that's foam or rubber, now you you might have the range of motion sitting there in the actual 3D printed animatronic, but then by the time you add all these layers inside, it's almost like you don't have yeah. enough range of motion now. That's it. When we were developing the ride vehicle itself, and I would have conversations with Nick, uh, we would like make reference to like train wheels or roller coaster wheels fittings and all these different setups. Brent, we would just try stuff. If you and I didn't agree yeah. on something, we would just go, all right, we'll try it. If it doesn't work, yeah. it doesn't work. Then we'll try the next yeah. one. Technology is making it easier, whether it's something that comes as an addition to your camera, to your phone, whatever it may be. The technologies are getting simpler to work with and to do this. It just becomes what is your creative output to making something that's really cool to play with and show people. Uh, the technologies are getting easier to work with. Yeah. 
Well, look, and I think that's a good place to wrap up this episode because what I want to do is, is, is you know, answer questions and, and talk more about technique uh, as we keep going here. I know people are into it and they want to understand how they can do it. And if if there's, you know, if there's a way we can inspire people to just try it at home, whether it's with fishing line or 3D printing your own animatronic, I mean, that's what I think is, is really cool. And what's exciting is we've learned a lot. So imagine where we'll go from here. Um, and we're and we're not even really done. I mean, yeah, for all intent and purpose, Muppet Land is done, but we're going to keep working on it because it's not the ride experience so much as perfecting our understanding uh, of these techniques. So like, follow, subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next week. Yep. <laughs>